and welcome to the Gamer's Table. It is Monday, and we will be reviewing Catacombs. It is, in its essence, a dexterity game. You're using, you know, flicking or pushing, however you manage to do it, um, to get your figures across the board, to interact with other figures, and to, you know, defeat the bad guys, or if you're the bad guys, to defeat the heroes. Up to four players take control of four heroes represented by wooden discs that must fight their way through a series of rooms filled with monsters controlled by the Overseer player. Battles are fought by skillfully flicking different types of wooden pieces across the game board. That represents the current room of the catacomb. If they survive all the rooms, the heroes face the objective of their quest. A fight to the finish with the catacomb lord. You will need dexterity and practice to be victorious. But there's more than just flicking in this game. There's, uh, all the characters have certain powers, certain abilities. There, there is some strategy to this game. It's a one versus many game. Um, there's one player who plays the Overlord uh, versus you know, one to four uh, other players playing the hero. These are the hero cards. What are some of the bad guys you got there? Uh, you know, bad guys. You've got a dragon, a sorcerer, a gorgon, and a lich. Uh, each one of these uh, comes with his entourage of uh, baddies that accompany him. Each one has different uh, abilities, and uh, it's it's actually quite well done with the, the variety you get. You get these these four and and the bag of bag of beasties. The bag of there's, fate. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here. There's probably 10 or 12 different types of critters. You know, skeletons, skeleton warriors, skeleton archers, you know, centaurs, minotaurs, trolls, orcs, ogres. Yep, and they oh, all yeah. have their own little special powers. Some stun you, some do you know, poison two damage. You. Some have yep. ranged attacks, some yep. are getting multiple hand to hand attacks. They've all got their individual powers. Uh, the bad guys, there's a good variety there too. Your heroes uh, get some neat abilities. There's a certain stage of the game where you can buy more equipment and that. So that, would be this, money. that would be this deck. Oh, you got a separate deck. Of stuff that you can buy. Okay. I like the variety of the heroes. Um, they set comes with the four. You can get more as you expand the game. The variety of the big bosses is great. Um, you know, based on the fact that you, you shuffle up the different cards here, the room stack is... There's got to be 60 rooms in it. Well, some games you get a game board with catacombs. You get a game board with one side and another side and another game board with one side and another side. Yep. And I'm not going to bother opening the ball. And the last game board. <laughs> because you couldn't figure sides. out which way it folded. <laughs> I could. I could. I really could. Yeah, each, each game board has got <laughs> the the holes cut out of it. Where you place uh, the gray discs, the, the gray discs to, to indicate you know pillars or rocks or just stuff to block interference. line of sight yeah, interference. Yeah, the blocks on line of sight just get in the way. And basically, what happens is the player t player team yeah, goes will act I upon that four one. of the heroes. It's the other two uh, open the other, and then the Overlord will act with his horde of beasties. There we go. And uh, you basically each take turns. I'll 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 flick all my forces. You'll flick all your forces. And yep. the winner is whoever's left standing. You, know, you get uh, certain characters that you, okay, uh, you can hit twice or something like that or chain with their sp certain abilities. Like some of them are only one use, so you have to discard it. You've only got a certain uh, number of cards for the whole game. Other ones you can get weapons where you can fire, you know, each turn, you know, do certain things. But it's really a game, a lot comes down to a game of skill, how good it, you are at Clicking accurately, you know, bouncing the pieces around. Uh, but there is some strategy because each character, villain, or monster has uh, different abilities. Uh, all the game boards, it's probably hard to see, especially this one, the green one. But uh, <laughs> there's a line where all the players start behind. And then you have another line where all the Overlord places all his baddies wherever he wants. And in between, you have No Man's Land. And the game's going to be different every time you play it. I mean, the, the, the boards themselves, there's only six sides to the boards. So you're going to see the you know the colored backgrounds and the positioning of the blocks are going to repeat, but the contents of each room is going to be very different. The monsters are all unique in some way. There's no two monsters that function exactly the same. I mean, it even mentions in the rule book for the overseer. So sort of like, 
just have fun. You don't have to be perfect shots. Like, yeah. make, make the game move along. Like, the Overseer obviously has got the biggest turn. So, you know, speed it along, get the game going, have fun, you know? No, just don't go flicking them across. Or yeah. or you, can even have, you can even turn it into somewhat of a storytelling type game where yeah. Oh, you, yeah. you, you're playing it where, the, you know, the, the big dumb ogre is kind of, who is you around this corner? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you imagine right. having a lot of fun with a kid with that. Yeah. Right. Reenact the dwarven uh, tune Here comes the ogre. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh-oh, adventures, uh-oh. <laughs> they've also put out uh, three expansions since the original one has come out. Oh, yeah. Um, they add on a tremendous amount of... Uh, stuff. Stuff. You know, there's uh, one, the first expansion that gives you a whole mess more room cards. Um, and the following expansions give you some more heroes, some more big baddies. And, they actually and, come and out with the boards, too? No more boards. No boards more boards? Still the same boards. boards are still... But, uh, but you have... Different boards. You double the amount of uh, monster... Uh, tokens that you have in the base set and it just adds more variety more replayability and then more fun so i guess wrapping up for uh catacombs right now i'm going to give it an eight i enjoy it quite a bit I'd, I'd be interested in seeing these expansions i'm i didn't know they were out there but it's been quite a while since we played this and uh when we were playing it back in, in the day in the day whenever the we actually, I kept requesting it. I, I want to play it again. I want to play it again. I'm having fun been with it. for a year and a half. Come on. Now. Maybe maybe Chris has got tired of being beaten down. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, if you <laughs> haven't figured it out, normally games that Ken wins too often, we need to burn or we stop play. playing. Well, usually, yeah, if it's the first play and I won, <laughs> oh, yeah, we got to burn it. There's, All right, there's, there's, there's obviously wrong, yeah. something wrong with the game. Yeah, we can't Clearly. do that. We can't have that, no. I give Catacombs an eight. It's just a fun, light uh, adventure Fantasy style, go through the dungeon, get the bad guy game, and it's fun. Overall, I gave that game a an eight. It's a lot of fun. Peer pressure yeah. wins again. <laughs> <laughs> they threatened to beat me if I didn't go with them. Yeah, <laughs> the dose the size of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 a great little game. It's uh, it's simple, uh, simple to learn, and uh, lots of replayability. Yeah, you're not mm -hmm. fooling anybody. No. <laughs> <laughs> Should I just stop crouching? And <laughs> <laughs> Sit back down. <laughs> and that's it for this episode of The Gamer's Table. Tune in Monday for another review of another game. Hey, bye.